Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's Medicine for Members lecture. Uh, the aim of these talks is to engage patients, staff and the public. I'm Richard Stock and I'm a public elected governor of the Royal Free Trust and I work as a general practitioner in Haringey. And there are other governors in the audience and we'd be delighted to chat to you after the lecture. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce Mr Keith Hunt who's our complementary therapy coordinator here at the Royal Free and he's been doing that uh, particular role since 1992 when he set up the service but he goes back a lot further than that. Uh, he's been at the Royal Free for 49 years and he was originally based at the Grays Inn Road site and he's had the good fortune and the uh, uh, and the strength in all those 49 years never to have a day off sick so that's a, a vast amount of continuous service to his credit. In 1974, he was part of the group that had the honour of showing Her Majesty the Queen around the brand new hospital. So it's uh, quite a few years old now, but it still looks quite spick and span. And in 2012, he received the MBE. Now, last year, Keith gave us a presentation and he explained uh, his work in the area of providing complementary therapy to our patients in the Royal Free. And he also explained how this dis differs from alternative therapies. Uh, Keith currently coordinates over 30,000 complementary treatments provided each year to patients uh, spread over the eight sites of the Trust in North London. And in today's lecture, he's explaining to us how the service has been developed by him and his colleagues and is going to be developed in many exciting ways further. So I'll hand you over to Keith now, um, and at the end of his presentation, there'll be some opportunity to ask Keith some questions. Okay, welcome to everybody. Um, yeah, I, I just give you a brief uh, resume as well, uh, as Richard's done such an excellent job. But yeah, I mean, we are still, you'll see by how the presentation goes, is that um, we are funded by charitable sources. So, you know, I really have to get that over to you so that we're, you know, we all know that NHS isn't, uh, have a volume of money to, to throw. So I just wanted to sort of explain that, but I will go through that when we come to our figures. Um, what I wanted to sort of show you today is that we have gone, um, we've been invited, or I've been invited over to some sites across the world. Um, to really teach clinical massage because lots of people want to do what we do in this hospital but don't know how to either set up or get their therapists trained in a clinical way. The importance of is obviously when you are a therapist and you, you work on your own and you work as, as in your own business, you're reliant on that one patient that you have or your client. Whereas here we have to be much more responsible for Obviously, um, we, we, we are on a ward under manners, if you get what I mean, in the sense that there's a ward sister that runs a very tight ward, and we are invited by a referral basis to see a patient. Um, we know what we can do, but we are advised what we do on a ward. And it's quite a unique situation where the therapist does, can give feedback, but we actually are um, doing the areas of work that either the doctors, nurses, physios wants us to do. Which is obviously the safety aspect comes much more than working in your own treatment room. And that's the importance of a clinical. There are different ways. We work with gloves sometimes, we work with masks sometimes if we're in, in, in an infectious disease ward. So there are variations to working on somebody with just your hands and some oil. Um, I've got a practice that we know works here at the Royal Free. That's why every doctor uses us in this building and, we're, and every medical team uses us for the reasons of safety. Um, they trust us to do what uh, is requested. And that's the, that's the sort of way we've gone forward here and hence why we do have, we are the greatest user of complementary therapy in England in the sense of how many numbers we do. And so that's important. So safety is always the issue. Um, I've been very lucky in, see if I can get it the right way. Whoa, that's it. Um, we're going to take you from Hampstead to Japan. 
I had the honor of being invited by the Japanese uh, authorities to come out and teach two workshops. Um, A, they are the most fantastic therapists in the way of how they work. Um, they're industrious. Uh, teaching there was just the most unique experience. Whoop, I'm going the wrong way. Here we go. They, I did one teaching, as you see, I had a small group, not. <laughs> um, I had one in Osaka and one in Tokyo. Um, and they invited me over to do one workshop in each of those areas and also to speak at their conference. Um, now, when you teach in Japan, the most fantastic thing is you don't ever have to say, could you turn your mobile phone off? Or could you stop talking at the back? Or can you concentrate on what I'm trying to show you? There, everybody sits and is wanting to learn. And it's, it's really uh, an experience that I can't, I can't tell you how fantastic it is. And when you show something, if you turn round and you've got 40 therapists behind you, they're all doing the move without the body in front of them. And that's a great way of learning. And I'm trying to teach English therapists that that is a great way of learning. You might not have a body under you, but you can still the movement. And it's just an unbelievable way of, of learning. And they have got it right. As you can see, the Royal Free Charity um, benefited, or my fund benefited, because the fee that they paid me to go out there went obviously to provide the care that we do here at the Royal Free. Um, oh, I'll get it right in a minute. Uh, as you can see, it was a very busy class, um, but I was being filmed, so it was on a big screen as well, so those who couldn't see me working at that, but I obviously work with every group. Um, the, we had translation, for obvious reasons. Um, the, I had a, a wonderful translator for, for when uh, I was actually explaining something. But you know, hands tell everything. You don't really always need to talk. Um, your hands tell the story, and obviously they mimic what you're doing. So it's, it's a, an ideal situation. This was in one of the classrooms in Tokyo. Uh, 40 students. They're all qualified therapists, so they all want to take this into hospices and hospitals. It's a slow process, it doesn't happen overnight, but um, some of the speakers at the conference were doctors who were eager to get it, um, get more of it. It does happen there, but not as much as they want it to. So hence, uh, I had the opportunity to go out there, show them how we do it. They've all followed it. They all were repeating in English saying, look at the eyes, the eyes will tell you. The eyes always are, are, are the soul, and if you're patient, they will, your eyes the eyes, their eyes will tell you whether they're comfortable. It, it doesn't need language. Um, am I going the right way? This, uh, we've moved on to New York now. Um, I am bringing, uh, we're hoping to bring 30 Japanese students, uh, qualified therapists over next year. We're going to have them here at the Royal Free um, to do the same as I did in, uh, in Japan, but with real, pre with real patients here. I have a wonderful group of patients, some of which are in the audience now, that always help me with teaching because there's nothing better to learn from a real patient. It's okay to actually have a, an actor or have a fellow therapist being a patient, but you, you learn so much from a real patient and actually the therapist is much more careful to be um, appropriate in the way that we work. Obviously, what people don't understand is the depth of massage we use in a hospital. We don't use deep tissue massage at all, unless a doctor has given us permission to do it. So all our work is very gentle. It's very repetitive, which is why that most of our patients on the ward either fall asleep or feel very restful afterwards. And that's the whole aim of our, our work, is to make somebody feel comfortable and restful. We are the treat not the treatment, and I think that's a really big thing to remember, is that let the doctors and the nurses look after the disease. We're looking after the person behind the disease. So the holistic approach is really that we're there to listen. We have great listening skills. In a hospital, when do you get somebody for 20 minutes at your bedside, one-to-one? -one? It's a really important factor that people are remembering that the patient is there 
but they're also a person. And as I think this is our biggest thing that we've actually brought into the Royal Free, is that, that attitude. Later on, I will read some, some of the comments that patients have put. I was then invited to New York by a patient who we've been looking after here, who was a New Yorker and had to go back for further treatment in New York. She was having her chemotherapy here at one stage and now has her chemotherapy in this very beautiful plush surroundings in, and you can see Central Park there and you can see the reception is a little bit better than the Royal Free reception. Um, but what they didn't have was they didn't have any massage. She had a massage therapist once a week for two hours in the unit and obviously all the patients there wanted that service. So when she knew I was going over there for a few days rest, um, rest, so I ended up working at this, uh, well I went to see her consultant here at this, this hospital. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I'll get it right in a minute. This is the lady in question, she's a wonderful woman. Um, you don't say no to her, she's got a, a questionable way of a, a real Brooklynite and um, she said, I want you to meet my consultant. So she arranged the meeting and I went there and I thought, you know, I'm wasting this very valuable oncologist's time. And as you can see, the plush surroundings of the individual suite that each person gets, the TV on the wall, the telephone at use with no charges. Yeah, it's lovely. But what she really wanted was a massage on her feet or her shoulders when she was sitting having her treatment. Um, so, I, I, as I say, I must ad admit that I did actually think the hour I spent with the consultant showing him our forms, how we work. Uh, obviously, litigation is a massive thing in America. Um, we have a consent form that we ask oncology patients, cancer patients to sign when they first see us. And we just actually tell them that this isn't instead of your traditional treatment of radiotherapy, surgery or chemo. Um, this is only done once. Once we've done it, we actually explain that we are just an adjunct, we are there for the person and we won't change anything. It's a safe procedure. So I spent an hour with, this, with uh, her consultant and I actually did think, I'm wasting this man's time. He's got more things to do than, than listen to me. Um, Am I going the right way? No, I'll get it right in a minute. Sorry. Okay. May 25, 2015. There. The smiley face is that they now have, from 9 till 5.30, Monday to Friday, a massage therapist on the ward. So it, it just shows you, even though I thought I was actually wasting my time, he just felt that the way we do it here, in the way of making quite clear to every patient that you know, we're not there to clear their cancer, we are there for them as a person. And sometimes, as anybody's suffering, and we have, I've got some of my patients out there, that's what you need, somebody to chat to, laugh with. We use a lot of humour in this place, and I think one doesn't forget, yeah, I think everybody forgets when somebody has cancer that they've lost their sense of humour, and they haven't. It's just that everybody sort of putty foots around and they don't want to say the wrong things. And sometimes humour can be really important, um, when you're going through hard times. So that's the success in New York, um, and long may that be, and Eleanor's doing quite well uh, in her treatment out there. Have I got it the right way? Czech Republic. Now, the only reason I've included this, this patient, Marquetta, I looked after for a year here with MS, and um, unfortunately she, she was... Um, severely taken without any knowledge. She didn't know she had MS. She came in here, couldn't move anything but her head. And we looked after her upstairs on the ward for a year. And then finally they, they realised that she needed extensive rehab. So she went to Queen Square and from Queen Square she went back home to Czech Republic. The reason I'm including her is that there they have um, a, a pay system in their health service. So you pay to see your GP you pay to go in hospital at eight pounds a day for your board and lodging. So, you know, it's a different look at that. But the one thing, I go over there once a year as my charitable thing um, to see her for two days and she gets three massages in those two days. She's doing really well, as you can see. She walks with crutches now. Um, but it just shows you how the connection that we've made with patients, it's a wonderful connection. Um, and it's, it's sort of, 
it's what makes me tick every day is that that connection with all these different people that um, she had lived over here for 10 years. So she's now back in her own country, but the one thing she missed, and her brother wrote to me and said, you know, if there's any chance, and they haven't got money there, it's not a rich country, um, would I come over? So I decided that that would be my charitable um, event. It's 10 years now <laughs> since I'm going there every year. But I'm seeing progress. I'm now sort of part of the family. I've seen the, her brother that's, that's, that's standing behind. He's had two children in the last 10 years. So I am part of their family now, which is really lovely. But it just shows you the difference. They get fabulous physio, but massage doesn't come into their, um, in, into their remit. Canada. I was asked to go out to teach in Canada because, of all places, it's the slowest area to absorb complementary therapy in the care of cancer. They're very old-fashioned in their thoughts. I'm not saying the quality of the care of the oncology is not good. That is good. But they've never believed in anything complementary to go with it. As you can see, I was invited over there, and this was my group. I had 44 people that were desperate, all qualified therapists, desperate to do what I do. Um, I was there for three days on, on a workshop with them. Um, and once again, you know, it's been a slow old process. And the sad, you know, the sad thing is that um, I think there's only two now out of that 44 that have got places. They only use them in hospice care. They don't use them in traditional hospital care. And I was on a TV program out there because there was some real uh, against complementary therapy. And I, I had to go on TV with this consultant who said to me, uh, aren't you worried about moving the lymphs and uh, creating more cancer? And I said, well, our stroke is less than drying yourself with a towel. So in other words, do you tell your patients not to, to uh, wash? And he was, well, of course not. I said, well, the, the actual stroke we use is so gentle that there is no movement that way. And then he sort of went on about the lymphs moving. I'm not going into too many technicalities, but you move your lymph when, I've just moved my lymph. I've just moved my other lymph, you know. So it's every movement. So in other words, the only way you could stop the lymph from being moved is to tie the legs and tie the arms together and lay there and not move. So, you know, these are the things that I've actually been able to actually explain to um, fellow physicians that want, either want to get it involved into their country but we are still sadly a myth there. This is what we're providing here now in our trust. Um, we have moved, even in a year since I last spoke, we have moved again. Um, we're now at Barnet. We're at Barnet Renal Dialysis. We're at Edgware Renal Dialysis. We're at Edgware Neuro Rehab. We're at Finchley Memorial. We're at Tottenham Renal Dialysis. All medical disciplines and wards at the Royal Free Hospital are covered. We were starting at Chase Farm in January and we set up a new service in the maternity unit at Barnet Hospital, which actually has happened. It happened two weeks ago. So we're now not only doing oncology and haematology at Barnet, which was our, our remit to do two days, we're now a third day uh, in the maternity unit, which is nice for the therapist to have a little bit of a balance of, of patients. You know, if you do one style of patients, it can be a little heavy, especially in oncology and, and, and haematology. So it's nice, you know, we all working in this building work on variation from eating disorders in children, uh, neuro, uh, care of the elderly, um, dementia. We have a great range of areas that we cover, which is lovely because it is a cross-section. And, I mean, I don't work as much on... Uh, on the wards now as I used to. Um, for obvious reasons, there's lots more paperwork now that we're doing over 30,000 treatments. Um, so, you know, obviously, uh, to actually coordinate those sort of services, it means I'm stuck in an office much more than I ever wanted to. Um, but, you know, that's the success of a service. And if we don't do the paperwork, then obviously we won't be as good as we could be. And we have to be you know, figures are, are important. We're not financed by the trust. I am financed by the trust. So they pay one salary, which is me, um, and the rest of my, my team, which is 27 people now, some are volunteers and some are paid on sessional basis. So we have to find that money. 
um, but it's not coming from trust funds. And I do have to tell you that because, you know, if I stood at, at uh, Belsize Park tube station and said, we've got £100,000, uh, would you spend it on another nurse on the ward or more nursing on the ward or a complementary therapist, i.e. a massage therapist? I know what everybody would say, and I would say it too, that, you know, obviously we haven't got endless funds in, in the NHS. So, um, but as you can see, we are now uh, really um, pushing <laughs> the greatest sort of area. And of course, it's, it, the charity have, have been the most fantastic to me. Um, and when I was in Japan, that was the other thing that uh, I, they asked me to bring out a collection box because they knew I was putting my fee into, uh, into paying back to Fund 270. And at the conference, everybody wanted their photograph taken with me. So the organiser said, if you want the photograph, you have to put money in the box. <laughs> we got 68,000 yen, <laughs> which was a fantastic achievement. Um, and it, was, uh, and it was really lovely. I've got everybody's business cards and I just got so much warmth in, in the country. Okay, am I going the right way? Let's see if I've got it. No, see. Okay, patient treatment figures for 2014-15. Care of the elderly, as you can see, is a massive figure. 3,591 treatments. Hemo, hematology and oncology is obviously the greatest user. I started in oncology and it's always going to be my priority um, because I feel that we can make a difference to that journey. Um, and as you can see, combined was 9,680 treatments. Massive amount. Renal, um, we're very busy in dialysis. The most boring time for poor people sitting on dialysis is three times a week. They are sitting on dialysis for three hours a day. Um, if we can make that journey a little easier, uh, hence that's what we do. So, We've got um, a team of therapists out there for, for that. Liver, uh, once we do, as, as everybody probably knows, that we have a, um, a really very brilliant transplant unit here. And obviously we get most patients that are actually uh, waiting for a transplant. So we actually have them with their little uh, uh, box waiting for that to ring to say there's a, there's a liver waiting for them. And you know, so we're here for their family because as you all know, it doesn't just affect the patient, it affects the whole family. The wife or the husband, depending on who needs the transplant, are going through hell. Um, we've always looked after the, uh, the patient's wife or, or husband in those cases because sometimes you're actually doing two, two people when you're doing the, the, the partner purely because they're going through, you know, they're worried about their partner, and it's, um, but the patient in the hospital is more worried about them at home. Are they eating properly? Things like that. So we can be the link person. Uh, neuro, 1,780 uh, treatments. Plastics, we, this is sort of fairly new for us as well, the plastic side. Um, obviously the Royal Free are, are specialising in, in plastic surgery, both after mastectomies, um, and all variations of, of plastic surgery here. So, um, so that's a new unit to us. Scleroderma, we've always, I've worked with Carol Black, who's probably the English um, top person in scleroderma. She's now Dame Professor Carol Black. Uh, and we've always had that relationship with her in the sense of looking after her patients. And as you can see, we, we see them, they come in every six months for Isla Prost. Uh, which is a, 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 an infusion which has helped open out the veins to let fluids go through. Um, very successful. They phone us now. We, we, have them, we know when they're coming in because they phone us a week before they're coming in and saying, I'll be in for Isopros for the next week. So they go in our book so we know that we're, we're looking out for them. Staff. We wouldn't run this hospital if we didn't look after some of the staff here. We did last year 1,555 uh, treatments to them. You can imagine, you know, they do take their work home with them. They do care about their patients. They do very much care when they lose a patient. And we're here at least to actually listen, um, maybe just do their shoulders. Uh, some of the office staff that sit on the computers like that all day long, we look after their shoulders. So it's a really important part of our work to, to make sure, if we look after the staff, we're looking after the patient. Because if you've got a happy, happy staff, you've got a happy patient. Um, other medical areas which can be 
children with eating disorders, as I said, um, various other things that... Cardiology is probably our lowest user, um, but, you know, we can't have every discipline. But, so 29,000 and 29 patient visits over the, over the year. Let me tell you, in six months, we're 3,000 up on those figures. So this year is going to be another bumper year. Oh. Okay, just new services. This is Barnet. This is the therapist um, Nadine with a lovely patient at Barnet. This was on the opening day that we, we actually launched the service there. And as you can see, it's, you can actually tell the relationship between therapist and patient. It's a really caring, uh, empathic through. We do um, mums in the uh, neonatal unit. Can you think of anything worse than giving birth and not being able to take your baby home? So we do look after mums here. Um, and we don't actually touch babies. The babies, we would show mum how to do it. But obviously, that should be for mum and dad to do and get used to the smell of them when they're doing a massage. But we would look after the mums that are, as I say, waiting to take baby home. And we also have a very, very busy service of seeing new mums each day. So uh, Monday to Friday, we see on average about eight mums, new mums that have just given birth that night or that day. Uh, we, that's our, our new service in there, which is going really well. Obviously, it's all about time and, you know, we have to sort of, if there's lack of therapists that day, obviously the essential services like oncology, like cancer and haematology are always looked after first. Okay, Barnet patient figures for six months. So this is our brand new service, Barnet, which is oncology, haematology and renal dialysis. In the six months is 1,211 patient treatments. So, you know, for a brand new service, um, it is a brilliant, brilliant service. In the six months on maternity, 924 mums have been seen. So, you know, everything we touch turns to gold. It's just that it's hard to keep up with the level of patients that we have in the hospital. As everybody knows, this hospital's always busy. There's very few beds that are ever empty in this place. This is the chemotherapy suite. The reason I'm doing this is this lovely group of young ladies. See, gentlemen, you, we do look after you for very pretty girls. Uh, you know, some days you get unlucky and you get me, but you know, you can't win them all. Um, so Rosalia, Mel, Kimberly, Caroline and Therese are in uh, the chemo suite on a daily basis. So this was a new service and it was through a donation from the talk I did last year that has enabled this service. It was a fabulous donation, um, but that's enabled me to have a member of staff on chemo suite each, each day of the week. Um, any of you that have gone through chemo know it's, it's tedious, it's sometimes painful, and to have something as a variation just take the edge off, off of, of things. And as you can see, we've done 1,154 patients in six months. So it's a heck of, a, heck of an area to cover. Um, what do we mean to the patients? This was a young man, 42 years old, with that very young family, as you can see on the other side, who was traveling down from Lincoln. Um, he was an absolutely adorable man and was having his treatment here because he had a NETS tumour, a neuroendocrine tumour. And he got to me, as you can see, and I might be blubbering in a minute, but this young man had this beautiful family. He was fighting to stay alive. And every time he came down here, the only thing that took the edge off of all his treatment and the drive, you imagine driving down from Lincoln each time you come for treatment. Um, he and his family, uh, in the end the family came down and lived down here for his last two weeks of his life and he passed away last year, uh, early parts of this year. And the thing being is that this is what we mean to the family. I know the children's birthdays, I write to them. Um, it's wrong to see a, a young family like that lose their dad, but it happens and the only reason that I've showed it to you is that this is what it means to the patients. I'm still in touch with his wife. She phones me to let me know how, how the kids are doing. 
Um, they live in a tiny village, you know, and it's, it's like a big shock to the system to be bringing up three young children on her own. Um, but we made a difference. We made a difference to her. We made a difference to him. And, you know, uh, he, he passed away in this building. Um, I'm sorry, he didn't. He passed away in Lincoln. I saw him on his last day and he died the next day when he got back to Lincoln which is what they wanted, because you know, it's very difficult to uh, transport somebody who's passed away back up to a long area like that. Oh, oh dear. That's what we need. Um, we need another 35,000 to keep the same scale of work for the department. If you could run a marathon, do a sky jump, sit and bake beans for the day, please raise your hand and say yes to me. Um, the charity will always cover the story and they will always help with advertising. The charity are grand with us, but we do have that shortfall. And to keep the level of work that we're doing, we, we, are, we are only honest to charitable sources. And it is you know, important that if you do know of anybody that, is, that has a business that would like to uh, invest some money in us, the money's well spent. I have no wastage in my office. I have passed down furniture. I, <laughs> I only have to pay staff. Um, who are my assets and I can't do everything for nothing and so that's my plea oh. um, I'm just going to read you something that came today and I swear to God it came today and anybody wants to check the letter it came at 17th of November at 1540 dear Keith I hope you don't mind me writing to you unannounced I'm not sure if you remember me but I'm the husband of one of the chemotherapy patients from about six months ago. I'll leave the name out, obviously. You may or may not know, but very sadly we lost her in June of this year. Our family world has just started to settle after the huge impact of our loss. Kathy has an amazing individual, um, an incredible mother and a wonderful wife. And as you might imagine, it is difficult to adjust to a world without her. I wanted to thank you and especially Therese for all the vital support and positivity you showed us during our time on the chemo ward. I can't describe adequately in words how much seeing Therese lifted both her and my spirits in such an encouraging way. For a brief time, the suite was transformed into a little oasis of calm and positivity. I'm sure you, more than anyone, have an understanding of the tension and foreboding that such brutal weekly treatment can provoke. However, these tough times were made so much more tolerable by the intimacy and warmth of complementary therapy. I know that with Th Therese, she enjoyed a really lovely rapport, and I'm so grateful that these were the times to offer such positive energy so freely. Seeing her each week was like a little beacon of hope and tranquility. I have no idea how you are funded or quite how your service is set up, but I would very much like to know if, if it might be possible to help raise funds to keep your service going at the Royal Free. In my eyes, complementary therapy was a lifeline, ensuring a patient felt like a whole person, not just a collection of symptoms, vital in shaping a gruelling but necessary regime into an unmanageable event. I'd be grateful for any information you could pass on to me. I'd love to help in some small way. In the meantime, my apologies for taking so long to thank you for your help. With three youngest children and full-time employment, life is very busy, but I have been meaning to get in touch for some time. Please pass on my deepest thanks to Therese. I will be happy for you to pass on my email address if she would like to get in touch. Once again, a huge heartful thanks for the work that you do so. It's so valuable. Long may it last. You know, that, that came today and I thought it was so poignant to, to bring it to you. But the sort of letters we get or, or um, emails we get are things like, you made a bad day a little bit better. And, you know, they are powerful words when somebody's going through such a dreadful journey. And we're just, we're lucky. We're, we as therapists, I promise you, are lucky. I have chosen my team to be, we are all very much alike. Um, I have high standards, as they know. And we don't take on, we take on less than apply. And I have to be, you know, I know probably some questions will come out about other complementary therapies. But the one that everybody trusted here in the way of medical side was massage. They knew once they, the only thing they didn't understand is how deep do we work? And once they realized it was a very safe procedure, 
It was the one thing that every consultant said yes to. Um, we have, we are the lucky ones that we actually see the patient at their most vulnerable, and we also see them and to get a heartfelt letter of, of you know, because we get lots of, I saw you, I, I walk around the hospital and somebody says to me, you treated me 20 years ago, do you remember me? And I'm thinking, um, only, we, we've done, this year, we've done our quarter of a millionth patient, so I must say, sometimes I bluff it and say, yes, of course I do. Um, but we're the lucky ones because we're let in. We are really let in. They'll tell us something that they don't feel that they should ask a very busy nurse on the ward or the doctor that doesn't have time for every sort of bit of their concerns. We have the time because we're there with them. So we're the, we're the very privileged um, group of, of therapists that are lucky to be let in. Um, it is so grateful to me to see some of my patients out there now that we've helped go along their journey. Um, and they're always thankful, they'll always get a smile, they always give me a smile. And that's what we want. We want this work to continue forever and a day. I'm 66 next week, so I don't know how long I've got left. But um, the passion that I still have from day one is still there. Get rid of the paperwork, I'd love to, but I can't. Um, but I have such a fantastic team around me. Um, there's not one weak link, and that, that's, the, that's the important thing, is that we all sing from the same hymn sheet. And, um, and we've, been, we've been pleasured to, to allow you guys, some of you out there, into our lives. And we've, and you, we've let you into our lives, and we've let them into our lives. And it is just a fantastic uh, arrangement that we have. So long may it go on. Long may the charity support us as they do. Um, they are wonderful to me, and uh, I, I have great respect because I know they have lots of claims on their money. But I think we are patient-based, and I think that's the most important thing, is that people see their money go to the patient and their patient and their relatives, and it's never wasted. So thank you for listening.